So I promised a while back to show you how to make a vinyl mesh stencil that you can use for your projects. This is that video. Thank you for joining me. I'm Linda from Remade with Love, and this is how you can create a do-it-yourself mesh vinyl stencil that you can reuse over and over for your projects. This is how I made the word rise that I used for my etching tutorial, etching on glass. And it's really quick and easy, although you have to follow some steps and figure it out for your own items. So your own heat press or iron may be different and things like that. So we'll go over it. What you'll need is some um, or Oracle or other 631 or 651 vinyl. I use 651 and I use kind of the matte, not the shiny finish. For me, that works. I also use a heat bond ultra hold um, transfer. It's an iron on adhesive that has adhesive on both sides. On one side, let me grab the, the piece right here. On one side, it'll be really rough. On the other side, it'll be smooth. Um, there's actually a peel that you'll do to the smooth side that will allow your mesh to stick on your vinyl transfer and that's how you'll get that mesh. I use, let's see, I think it's 431, um, or excuse me, 43, 110 mesh, uh, and I use silk screen material. Some people use organza, that's great. Some people use tool, you'll have larger holes, um, but that's still workable. You don't wanna use anything that has glitter or anything added to it because this will clog the mesh and not allow the paint to get through. So I use the um, Silk Screen Supplies 110 43 mesh. And the Ultra Bond is right there. You'll also need some parchment paper. I fold it in half right away before I use it so it's ready to go. Put that off to the side. And then I have a tray since I don't have an ironing mat for my heat press. I use a tray with a simple cotton cloth with no design on it so that when I do press, it's not going to harm anything underneath, like in this case, my table. And a heat press. I have a Cricut heat press. Um, you can use an iron. We want to get to 280 degrees and be able to press using that. I also use a Cricut um, maker in order to cut my design. You might have your own um, design maker. There's silhouettes and, and cameos and other types. So whatever you're comfortable with working with, go ahead and use that. I've got my computer on. I'm just going to sign into my program and show you how uh, to go ahead and make this. What I'll do is, in order to make my rise, it was very small, maybe about an inch, inch and a half tall letters. So I'm going to cut out the amount I think will cover my design. So what I'm going to do is cut out my 651 vinyl. I'm then going to cut out some heat bond. So I put it with the, the rough side down because that's the side that's going to be melted against the top of my vinyl. And then I just do a quick cut. You're going to be using the um, parchment paper so you won't get anything on um, anything that matters, but it's still good to try and keep it as together as possible. Then with that, with the rough side down, I'm going to put it on my, in my parchment paper and try not to move any of this. Make sure it's, it's on there. Grab your heat press. And I press for about 10 seconds at 280. Don't let it move at all. immediately peel it off. It's going to be hot to the touch 
and you want to have this as smooth as possible if there's any extra glue you want to try and trim that off at this point and what you're going to be doing from here is sending it through your cutter so that it cuts out the design that you want to have on your mesh stencil so you want to try and get it as clean as possible so you don't mess anything up in your machine or on your cutting mat those you want to try and keep as long as possible so it's always good to have them in clean working order okay that's good this is a cold press we want to go ahead and run it through our Cricut cold we don't want any of the glue warm to the touch it might move on the stencil and then we'll have just kind of a, a not a clean cut at all so this first round, we're going to go ahead and put it down the normal vinyl side up. In this case, it's now got a covering with the bumpy side of the heat bond down. And we put it in as if it ha didn't have a heat bond on there. We'll go ahead and load it up. Send it through the cutting process. Now what I use my setting on is um, holographic sparkle iron on and I always press the more as far as um, normal cut or more deeper cut, I go for more. You'll have to figure out on your machine what works best, but that's what I found and um, I really think it works well. Peel it off your backing and you're going to go ahead and remove as if you were now going to weed like normal. So you're going to pull this front cover off. Remember that's the adhesive and you can see it looks a little um, bumpy or mottled, that's okay. It's completely stuck on that side. You won't have to worry about that at all. And go ahead and weed as you would normally. So off comes that backing and out comes the vinyl. Okay, stick those up there. I'm going to go ahead and speed it up so that you don't have to watch me weed everything. Okay, once you've weeded your stencil, the last step to get it ready to become your reusable mesh stencil is to bond it with the um, organza or in my case I'm using silk screen. So your next step is to cut a piece. Now mine came in these big panels. Um, sometimes it comes in sheets. And I'm just going to cut a little bit over the size. Make sure it's not stretched, it's not pulling. It's okay if your organza goes a little bit out, we'll be trimming it up later. So if it's a little bit larger than your, the piece of vinyl that you're working with, that's fine. Now what you're gonna do, the back still has that um, vinyl backing to it and that when you pull it off will be what you stick to the mug or the um, any item that you're going to be working with the stencil on. So at this time you're going to go ahead and place the organza or um, silk screen on top and again you're going to put it in sandwiched in between the parchment paper. This is the critical point where you put this in the parchment paper you do not want it to move. If you move at all that will cause the glue to seep in between the um, 
silkscreen mesh and then cause an area that won't be quite perfect. So this is the part to really take your time with. And if it's not on correctly, there's no going back. You have to make it again. Get used to it. Try this out. You can see how quickly it's gone. And you want it on for about 15 seconds. I'm going to start my timer now so that as I push down, I'm not going to be moving it at all. Then because I started it a little late, I'm going to hold it on a few seconds more and ease off and pull straight up. All right, I'm going to give it a couple seconds in the parchment to cool. I don't want anything to move in here. And once it becomes a little cooler to the touch, I'll go ahead and peel it off. All right, holding the edge, and you can use the organza to help you here keep it down. I'm going to pull it away. And it looks really clean, really good. So we'll put this to the side and now you can trim up the edges because once we have this trimmed, we're actually ready to use it. Okay, I'll show you how I think it's easier to pull back on this. I can... Okay, when you're ready to use, it's easy to pull the top, the vinyl away from the backing. Hang on to your backing, you're going to want to reuse that. And you can see we have a really clean, clear um, vinyl stencil that can be reusable. That's what I use to make my um, etching on this cup. Go ahead and try personalizing your own stencils to use on t-shirts, on cards, on etching glass, whatever you'd like to do on, in painting. This mesh, in this case, it's the, um, the mesh that you'll use for um, t-shirt printing and things like that, or organza or tool, will really allow you to increase what you can produce and what you can create. I hope you enjoy. Please watch my other videos. Follow me on my Facebook page, Remade with Love, and my YouTube channel, Remade with Love.